It's the latest chapter in a shocking tale of lust and lies that ended in the tragic death of Nikki McFadder when she was just 30 years old. My sister was the sweetest little girl that I've ever met in my entire life. With a love of adventure that her big sister Latoya says drove her to join the Navy straight out of high school. And it was scary for me because it was my baby sister and I felt like I needed to protect her, but she was ready to go. She wanted to see the world. And after returning to civilian life, Latoya tells our Michelle Sagona, Nikki turned her sights from the sea to the air, working as a ticket agent for US Airways at Charlotte Airport in North Carolina and skydiving every chance she got. She was, hey, guess what I'm doing today? I'm jumping out of an airplane. I said, huh, what? What? What do you mean? She says, I'm skydiving and sent me a picture of it. She said, that's all I want to do. And I said, okay. So the single and ready to mingle Nikki had been looking for her Mr. Right on an internet dating site. Was she meeting a lot of good matches? Some, yes. Some, I don't know anything about. Among those Nikki did mention was Theodore Manning, who, like Nikki, was 30, and also a military veteran serving in the Air Force before taking a job at a power plant in Columbia, South Carolina. I remember her telling me about him, but never told me his name. She would always so, say, that's my new friend. Nikki affectionately called him Teddy, and she would drive to nearby Columbia to see him on weekends. And what did you know about their relationship? At first, pretty cool. She said there were ups and downs in it, things that she didn't like about him. One of them was said to be Manning's admitted weakness for other women and his insistence on dating them simultaneously. She wasn't looking for anything serious. Well, I believe that, that Theodore Manning was, was sort of a Casanova with women, that women liked him. So he was, I think, dating four or five women at the same time. Latoya says her little sister finally decided to dump the divorced father of a young daughter after dating him on and off for several months. She says, Toya, I am ending it. I'm done. And Nikki would drive to Columbia to see Manning one last time, telling Latoya, I'm just going to get some stuff back from him. But Nikki didn't return as planned. She was supposed to come back that same day. She had to work and she never reported to work and I never heard anything from her. Latoya didn't panic immediately. I just kept calling her cell phone and I thought maybe she was out of town or something. Which was nothing unusual for Nikki. Because she did work for the airline and she would take trips. But then Latoya gets a call from Nikki's boss saying she hasn't shown up for work for nearly a week. How unusual is it for Nikki not to show up for work? Very unusual. She had perfect attendance. Now Latoya does panic and reports Nikki missing to the police. Because I said something ain't right. It, it's, it's not right. Nikki McFadder had told her older sister Latoya she was dumping Teddy Manning, the womanizing boyfriend she'd met on an online dating site. She says, Toya, I am ending it. I'm done. Nikki drove from her home in Charlotte, North Carolina to Columbia, South Carolina to see Manning one last time, telling Latoya, I'm just going to get some stuff back from him. But Latoya tells our Michelle Sagona Nikki would fall off the map and friends and family would be out searching for her for three agonizing weeks before learning what became of her. What was getting you through those three weeks? God, he's all I have. You're on your knees? Every day, begging, please. I don't know what the outcome is, but make me strong and make me be able to handle it. Columbia Sheriff's detectives investigating Nikki's disappearance immediately suspected foul play. The possibility existed that maybe something happened to her in her travels. She was kidnapped, robbed. Cops look at Nikki's boyfriend, Teddy Manning, but with all of his other girlfriends, it's a tangled web. Police wonder, could this savage killing be an act of jealous rage? Uh, we had to examine all those possibilities. But after talking to Nikki's friends and family, they zeroed in on Teddy Manning. Once we were able to identify Theodore Manning and speak with him, it really, the investigation really sort of uh, ramped up. 
Then, a big break in the case. Manning's phone records showed that on the day after Nikki's disappearance, he had called Kendra Goodman, a 27-year-old single mother of two and one of his many girlfriends. I was on the interstate at the time. And said, I'm just driving around. He said, well, don't waste gas. Come on over. I said, all right. Kendra was about to become entangled in a sickening murder case. Did he sound in distress? No. Did he sound like anything was the matter? No. Did he sound like he needed help? No. Speaking for the first time in this exclusive interview with Crime Watch Daily's Michelle Sagona, Kendra says she arrived at Manning's home to find him doing mechanical work on a black Honda he said belonged to a friend. I remember it was nice rims. And Kendra says Manning offered to give them to her. He said, you think these rims will fit your car? She says Manning then asked her to help him deliver the car to his friend and give him a ride back home. He pulls it out of the garage. He says, you know, can you follow me? And I said, sure. Kendra says they drove to a remote area where Manning asked her to wait in a church parking lot while he drove the car down a dirt road. And then I hear a big explosion in the background. I'm like, did I just hear a boom? Kendra says she immediately became suspicious. He gets in the car and he smells like gasoline. And I just look at him. His explanation was that they were back there burning trash or, or just burning something. But she insists it wasn't until cops came knocking on her door that she learned the car may have belonged to Nikki McFadden. I didn't know anything about that. You didn't know anything about Nikki? No. About her being reported no. missing? About an all-out search to find no, her? No, I didn't. But Lieutenant Kevin Eisenhower says Kendra did know it was Nikki's car and that she stonewalled detectives for a week. Cops start to wonder if she's now trying to pin the murder on Manning to save her own skin. She just continued to stick to a lie, and then when you just proved to her that she was lying, you'd come up with another one. You willingly sat down without an attorney to take polygraphs. Investigators say that those polygraphs showed a lot of deception. Is that accurate? Mm, yeah. Why did you lie during the polygraphs? I didn't lie during the polygraphs. My Explain nerves, yourself. My nerves were shot. I'd never done that before. Lieutenant Eisenhower says that's when she cracked. Once she failed the polygraph test, she provided details about where she thought Nikki's car was. Andy says he was horrified by what he found. The vehicle itself had been completely burned. The rims had even melted on the car and that charred skull had a bullet hole in the back of it. Kendra, who'd driven to the scene with detectives, knew she was in trouble. And I get out the car, and that's the last thing I remember. They said I got sick at the scene. I started throwing up. Sure enough, the charred remains turned out to be those of Nikki McFadder, who was so badly burned she could only be identified by dental records. I never cried. I just ran. I was trying to go get her. God promised her I would protect her. but I couldn't, she was gone. Nikki's inconsolable sister LaToya was given what little remained of her. And all I had was a small box. I didn't have anything as far as my sister, not much. Yeah, burn it all up, everything. I had nothing to really mourn but ashes. Did you have any idea initially who would have done something like this to your sister? No, ma'am. But Lieutenant Eisenhower did. At that point, we had enough to charge Mr. Manning. Teddy Manning had just been charged with the murder of Nikki McFadden, one of the young Casanova's many girlfriends. Detectives swooping in on his home immediately after finding Nikki's charred remains, stuffed in the trunk of her torch car, remote wooded area in Columbia, South Carolina. We obtained a warrant, immediately arrested him within probably 30 minutes of finding the car. Investigators had no shortage of incriminating evidence against Manning, including Nikki's blood splatter on a bedroom wall of his home, and this surveillance footage of him trying to loot her bank account at an ATM. It all just ultimately matched up. Detectives knew how Manning had killed Nikki after finding a bullet hole in the back of her skull. But what detectives didn't know was why Manning shot her. 
and the circumstances that led to the tragedy. We didn't get every detail in the end, but we got enough, I felt, to, to get the job done. Nikki had told her sister LaToya she was dumping her womanizing boyfriend, Manning, and was going to see him one last time to get some of her possessions from his home. I believe Nikki McFadder was here to end the relationship. It infuriated him. So he shot her. Execution style, say investigators. I felt like we had proven that this was a calculated, cold-hearted murder, pre-planned. But Manning told detectives a very different version of how Nikki died, telling them in this excerpt from one of his interviews. We never had a physical confrontation over the entire time we talked. But then Manning says Nikki got angry and that she was aggressive and that she couldn't handle how he described the relationship. He said, "Look again. I want to tell you, we're just we're friends with benefits. I want to make that clear." She wanted more, and and the. the that started an argument and ultimately fueled what happened to her. He described her as becoming very upset by this, uh, enraged. Manning's defense attorney, Luke Sheely, says his client told him Nikki grabbed a loaded handgun he kept in a bag, that they struggled over it, and it accidentally discharged. He describes the gun as going off. Her dropping to the ground is just kind of a slow motion thing for him, very surreal. But Lieutenant Eisenhower wouldn't buy it. Nikki was shot in the back of the head. That's not a typical injury for an accidental discharge or even, you know, a struggle over the gun. It, it, it's an indication of, of an all-out murder. And Lieutenant Eisenhower says that instead of calling 911, Manning tried to cover up Nikki's killing. The question he had to ask himself was, if I call police right now, and are they going to believe me? Um, and he made a poor decision, didn't call police, called a, a, another girlfriend. Kendra Goodman, who Manning would eventually throw under the bus, accusing her of being the actual mastermind of the cold-blooded disposal of Nikki's body. His testimony, obviously, was that she kind of guided him through disposing of, of this incident and, and kind of hiding, hiding the fact of it, kind of to help get him through this daze. That's a lie. That's all a lie. Kendra claims in this exclusive interview with our Michelle Sagona that she didn't know Manning had killed Nikki when she arrived at the house. Do you see Nikki's dead body anywhere? No. Did you see evidence of a murder? No. A gunshot? No. Kendra also says she had no idea it was Nikki's car Manning was working on when she arrived at the home. Did you look in the trunk of the car? No. Did you know that there was a body in the car? No. But investigators say Kendra knew all about Nikki's killing. We found some receipts where Kendra Goodman and Theodore Manning had gone to a local store and purchased bleach. We believe that was to clean up the crime scene. Kendra denies that. That was for my home, just my cleaning supplies from my place. But Lieutenant Eisenhower says Manning and Kendra did more than buy bleach. He says this security video is a damning piece of evidence against Kendra. Comps claim it captures Manning trying to use a debit card he'd stolen from Nikki's purse at a bank ATM. Detectives say Kendra was right there with him, sitting in the car. I didn't know what card he had. The detective says Manning gave Kendra $80 cash he'd also stolen from the purse, as well as the purse itself. I didn't know it was her money. You didn't know it was Nikki's purse? No. And Lieutenant Eisenhower says Kendra and Manny did something particularly appalling just hours after cremating Nikki's body. Did you have sex in the crime scene? In the house? Later that night, yeah. After every after everything had happened. Yeah. Which made it appear to Lieutenant Eisenhower that Nikki's shooting was a sick thrill kill. It's conniving, cold-hearted, unbelievable that someone could do that to a person and then be excited by it. Heartbreaking. Manning would go on trial for murder, and Kendra as an accessory after the fact. I felt like we had a, a good case and, and that we had proved it. But the jury shocked Nikki's friends and family, as well as police and prosecutors, when it found Manning guilty of only voluntary manslaughter. Yeah, I just respectfully disagree with their ultimate verdict. They didn't find him guilty of murder. 
They didn't go with self-defense either, um, but they went with something in between, saying that this was a heated exchange, this was something that was in the heat of the moment, a very emotional killing. But luckily, the conviction that they did hand down also carried a pretty, pretty stiff prison sentence. 30 years behind bars. In South Carolina, you have to serve 85% of your sentence, so he'll be there for a while. Kendrick Goodman was convicted of being an accessory after the fact, but would serve less than two years in prison after cooperating with police and testifying against Manning. Do you feel she got what she deserved? My personal opinion is that Kendra Goodman should have served a lot longer in prison. Kendra admits she made an error of judgment, but is glad she helped convict Manning of Nikki's killing. No plea on the table. I didn't do it for a plea. I didn't do it to try to lessen a sentence or anything. I did it because it was the right thing to do. And Nikki's sister Latoya says she accepts the jury's decision. My sister didn't have a voice. So I feel like justice wasn't completely served, but served to the best of their ability without a person to speak for themselves. LaToya also says she forgives Teddy Manning and Kendra Goodman. Hating you is not gonna take the pain away. Hating you is not gonna heal me any quicker. Hating is not going to mend my broken heart. So I forgive you. Kendra broke down when our Michelle Sagona told her. And she says she forgets you. I still think about Nikki's family and what they deal with, so I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through, but yeah, every day, and I'm still beating myself up. With Teddy Manning serving a 30-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter, people are still wondering how come he wasn't charged with murder. So we brought in attorney Emily Campagno to break this case down. Emily, thanks as always for being here. How is it that they couldn't get him on a murder charge? Nothing surprises me about jury verdicts anymore. Think of all the cases that the public has deemed a slam dunk that the jury returned a verdict of either a lesser charge or an acquittal altogether. Teddy trial to appeal his sentence using something called the Castle Doctrine. What does that mean? So it basically says if someone comes into your home, tries to kill you, you can use up to deadly force to defend yourself and you won't be prosecuted rather than being charged with murder and have to plead self-defense. Why do you think that defense did not work in this case? because this was clearly not a case of an intruder, and it clearly wasn't a case where the castle doctrine should be used. I take extreme issue with this, and frankly, if I was the judge in that case, I would have set that defense straight. That doctrine is reserved for someone breaking and entering into your home out of nowhere, and really, it's a violent situation. This was a girlfriend. This, the defense itself argued that they were so serious that it led to a heat of passion quarrel, so to me, it was an absolutely poor defense to even bring it up. Emily, thank you very much for your insights.